when uh, St. Thomas's Department of Theology got together and, and planned this course, the Christian uh, Theological Tradition, uh, we decided to work on two trajectories. Uh, by trajectory, I mean uh, kind of an angle or a direction in which we wanted to move. Uh, the first trajectory, which uh, should be fairly obvious, is a an historical one. That is, we start before the Christian tradition began and, and trace its roots, and we move on through history, first uh, through the Old Testament and then through the, the New Testament and then through a number of early church documents, and we carry it all the way on to uh, Vatican II, which was a series of church documents in the Roman Catholic Church that were formulated and released in 1963. That's the, that's the first trajectory. Uh, in this uh, particular segment, I want to talk about the second trajectory because uh, these are a number of important concepts for you to know. And this trajectory I call the five theological traditions. We, as a department, decided to uh, divide our, um, our purview, our, our angle, what we were looking for, what we were asking, into five specific theological categories. Now, the, the list is not absolute. The list is not divine. The list is not perfect. In fact, as I'll talk about probably later, uh, there, there's, there's some things that I think are really missing from the list. But be that as it may, the list is, is very useful, and we are, in fact, going to use it as a lens by which we're going to read the primary documents in this class. So I want to go over the five theological categories. Make sure you understand them. Make sure you know where they're located. Make sure you know how to find them. Now, the first theological category is so broad that you'd almost uh, think that it, it shouldn't have its own category because it's God. And when you're dealing with a Christian theological tradition, certainly, in a sense, everything is about God. But we're going to treat God very narrowly here as our first theological category. By God, what I mean is any place that we can locate a discussion of the nature of who God is. So it's specific, narrowly focused discussions about God. And these can come in two ways. Uh, either they can be overt discussions where somebody just comes down and says, uh, let me tell you what God is like. God is like this. But they can also be uh, actual descriptions of God's behavior where we can infer from what God does what God is like. Now, this is fairly straightforward, and I don't think you'll have any trouble finding them, but the difficulty that some of you are going to have is, in fact, that there is not one portrayal of God within the documents of the Christian tradition, but rather there are many. And these various different portrayals of God frequently conflict with each other. They're different. If you went into this course, if you understood the Christian tradition as conveying a single unitary picture of God, well, th then you're going to be shocked and, and, and I think you'll find yourself sorely mistaken. Uh, how can we account for this, uh, uh, these different portrayals of God? I want to just suggest three possible ways that we can deal with them. First, and I like this one a lot, uh, God is simply too vast a subject to be contained within a single portrayal. And one of the ways both the Jewish and the Christian tradition have dealt with this is by placing side by side differing pictures of God and allowing you to figure it out. The second possibility is a developmental or an evolutionary picture, which decides that the early formulations of God are perhaps less perfect or less complete. And as the Christian tradition and the Jewish tradition moved along, they developed and they refined their portrayal. The third possibility is simply that some of the ways that God is portrayed in the Christian tradition uh, prove to be incorrect or, or not good enough, and so others correct the earlier ones. Anyway, we're going to ask ourselves two significant questions regarding the portrayal of God. The first one is, how should this particular view of God that we have uncovered in this particular document, how 
is, should this view of God affect the way I see God? And second, and related, how does this view of God affect the way that the contemporary church regards the divine being? During the course of the semester, we're going to try to address and attempt to begin to answer these questions.